uh, just two years ago, I was managing 11 or more different contracts simultaneously. It's so much to where at the, in, at the end of the month, I had to invoice 11 different you know, entities for my money. And so you have to have an invoicing system in place. You have to know how to itemize on your invoice. You have to know what system and all that, all those records, all that stuff is very important. So having, um, even having like an accounting system, a CPA, like all that stuff, you have to know um, how to do it. You have to learn the process of invoicing, right? You have to understand invoicing for, 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 for many of you who are just starting out in business, or maybe you haven't had customers, or maybe you have had customers. Well, when it comes to government contracting, like you have to, you have to know how to invoice like for your services or for your product, right? There's different strategies based on if you have a team, there's different strategies. If you're subbing out work, or if you're, if you're working with, um, subbing out a part of the work or working with employees, like there's, there's all different types of strategies on how to invoice the government. And depending on the contract that you sign, you have to know whether you're going to be invoicing them weekly, bi-weekly, 30 day net, 45 days or 90 days. And then for those who like, we teach people how to go after contracts simultaneously. Yeah. You don't want to just stop at one because every contract is like, that's your that's your income, right? When that contract's in, if you don't have simultaneous contracts, then you're you're basically starting from zero. So you have to have simultaneous contracts where they're overlapping, right? And then that way you're constantly invoicing and invoicing and invoicing and not working yourself out of business, basically. Um, and so when it's like that, um, I remember just a couple of years ago. Uh, well, let me see. Yeah, it's just a couple of years ago. Like I I had like. 11 different contracts simultaneously. Like uh, just two years ago, I was managing 11 or more different contracts simultaneously. It's so much to where at the, in, at the end of the month, I had to invoice 11 different you know, entities for my money. And so you have to have an invoicing system in place. You have to know how to itemize on your invoice. You have to know what system and all that, all those records, all that stuff is very important. So having um, even having like an accounting system, a CPA, like all that stuff, you have to know um, how to do it. And so for, for some invoices, like depending on how your contract is set up and what type of service or product you're offering, there also may be some additional things that you have to provide. Like with my, uh, with some of my invoices, because I was on like construction sites doing construction photography and things of that nature, there were these waiver liabilities that I had to sign um, before and after. So before I get paid, I have to sign a waiver. And after I got paid, I have to sign off on that waiver that I got paid and all this stuff. So it helps the prime contractor stay in compliance and it shows that um, they're paying me my money and all these different things. There's all these different steps when it comes to, to invoicing, but also you also want to like, there are these, um, I forget what it's called. Oh, it's like a pre-lean notices, right? So for, for some, for some contracts, right, it may be um, required, not required, but it may be advantageous for you to file a pre-lean on the project to make sure when the project ends, especially if it's like a, a, five-year project, by the time the five-year project end, you want to make sure you've gotten all the money that they signed you up for. And so by filing a preliminary notice, that kind of helps you secure that the prime contractor is not going to play with you and they're not going to like just list you and not use you and not pay you the money that they listed you for and all those different things, right? So you have to understand the invoicing process and all those different things that go into play for that. Um, but these things are important, right? Especially like you have to know, you have to know these things, like especially for those who are just like, you know what, I'm tired of playing. I've been playing all year. Let me just go ahead and do the thing because one contract would not only can not only 10x whatever the investment you make, like literally be 10 times more or more than whatever that investment is, which means that it really didn't cost you anything. All it did, did was, was give you a, a tremendous cash infusion <laughs> into your bank account, right? Um, so not only like whatever that reason has been holding you, but it's like, you might as well just go ahead and do it. But when you get that contract, like 
now there's a whole new level of questions that's going to open up. There's a whole new level of learning things. First, you're learning how to get in. You're learning how to get pre-qualified, how to attract the government. Then you're learning how to market yourself to the government. Then you're learning how to get your first contract. And then once you get your first contract and how to manage that contract, how to do the invoicing and how to, you know, stay in compliance and all these, there's levels to this thing, right? Um, so, I, I, but I want to put it out there because I want people to know that, yeah, we talk about um, million dollar contracts, quarter of a million dollar contracts, $750,000 contracts. One of my clients landed a $26,000 contract for one day. A one hour service. I talked about that on, on the interview that I did with Myron Golden. One hour for teaching diversity and inclusion for twenty six thousand dollars. OK, I charge like she basically can tell people I charge twenty six thousand dollars an hour for, for my expertise knowledge. Right. And so when you get the contracts, it opens up new levels for every level of income, every level of growth, there's always going to be a new level of things that you have to know. That's why everybody needs a coach. Everybody needs a life coach, a, a business coach. Everybody needs to have someone who's already, who can help them continue growing along that and keeping the momentum to, to grow. Right. Um, so don't think that you can do business alone. I remember um, I used to do everything in business by myself. I used to be the accountant, the bookkeeper, the photographer, the videographer, the editor, the manager, the pitcher, the person that writes the bid, the person like I did it all. So I understand the one man band thing. Like I know it all, uh, all so well. Right. But it wasn't until I, I, I learned that I need help <laughs> with this stuff. I need someone to show me how to take my vision to the next level and the things that I need to implement, somebody who's already there because you don't know what you don't know until someone shows you. That's why everybody needs to go. That is the reason why I spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on coaches for me. Yes, even Dr. Kawana D has coaches. So if you don't think you need a coach, Think again, especially if you're ready to take your business to the next level, because you can only grow so far as your knowledge allows you to grow. You don't know what you don't know until you know, <laughs> until you learn that you didn't know that. And had you known that a long time ago, you'll be in a much better place.